congratulations, Senator Smith. It was an honor to work with both of you, and we continue to do so. The Independence Party came into existence 18 years ago for one simple reason. We needed a new reform movement in New York City that would put the interests of the people ahead of any party interests and ahead of any special interests. We wanted a new kind of city government and we saw the need for new political coalitions that could help move us forward. New Yorkers responded to that vision. Today, we have 119,000 members citywide. Now, let me put that in a little perspective. That's 2.8 times more members than the combined enrollment of every other minor party in New York City. And our members come from every community, every age group, and speak every language. Now there's a reason that we've grown. Political independence, the belief in putting people ahead of political parties, is growing in popularity all across the country. I'm very proud of the role the New York City Independence Party is playing in this sea change. I'm proud of our partnership with Mayor Michael Bloomberg, whom we elected in 2001, and with whom we ushered in an era of nonpartisan governance. I'm proud of the record-breaking 150,000 votes we pulled on the Independence Party line for his re-election in 2009. And I'm deeply proud of the 3,248 Independence Party members who joined county committees in their boroughs this year. The New York City Independence Party has indeed established a track record in the fight for nonpartisan political and social reform. We've accomplished a great deal in our 18 years, and we also realize that our work has just barely begun. It is my pleasure to acknowledge some special guests and friends that are here with us this afternoon. First, I want to give a shout out to my fellow county chairs, Bob Conroy from Brooklyn. Queens. Yeah. Sarah Lyons from Staten Island. Yeah. And Nardo Reyes from the Bronx. Yeah. I'd also like to acknowledge Harry Kresge, the general counsel to the New York City Independence Party and the country's leading expert. Pleased to have here with us today Gabrielle Curlander, the president and CEO of the All Stars Project. And we're gratified that three mayoral candidates are joining us this afternoon. You've already heard from one of them, State Senator Malcolm Smith. The City Council Christine Quinn will be joining us later this afternoon and now it's my pleasure to bring to the stage Adolfo Carrion, the former borough president from the Bronx and a newly registered independent to bring greetings. Thank you very much Kathy. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I have declared my independence. that it feels good. Um, I was describing the, the political conversation with some of the folks that, um, that we were starting to chat with as I moved through the room a few minutes ago, um, which I'll characterize. But before I do that, I do want to uh, congratulate your honorees today. Uh, Jackie, congratulations. Thank you for putting pen to paper 
uh, about this important conversation of where American politics should be going, independence rising. Um, I just uh, acquired the book at a breakfast uh, this, this, uh, this week. And I am halfway through it already. So, um, and my dear, dear friend Malcolm Smith, congratulations, brother! It's wonderful to see you. Um, what you see there, and it's funny because I, I know the feeling, Malcolm. Of you know, you you do your job. You you just show up every day. You work hard because you love your community. You love your city. Clearly, you um, given the lion's share of your adult life to this. Um, which uh, really should qualify you for a, a sanity check at some point in this journey, right? Um, but but that, that feeling of, oh, don't recognize me, you know, it, it sounds like a cheesy line, right? But in fact, the people who were in this, for the passion for community, for the city, for the country, they mean it. And if there is there's nobody, uh, I think, that deserves more credit in that rock, Far Rockaway community. You'll see some people on TV, you'll see some people making noise, but then you'll see the people walking the streets, like Lenora and Malcolm and Kathy and so many other leaders. You know, you just roll up your sleeves and show up. And that's what we do. Congratulations, my brother. You deserve it. Thank you. Now, the spirit in the spirit of keeping the two minutes that was granted me, um, I'm just going to say this. Um, I was describing a, a conversation that we sort of started uh, among a number of people that I ran into. And what unfortunately has happened is the, the, the political conversation about our future and who we are and what we ought to be doing to deliver uh, for the American people in all of the cities across this great country has really started to diminish to the point that it's like two bratty kids that go to corners and say, I'm right, you're wrong, and the other one says, I'm right, you're wrong. And look at the paralysis that we're, we're suffering and look at what has happened to the national conversation and to the local conversation. The prophetic voice, the voice of John the Baptist, the voice in the wilderness, the voice that is calling out the best in all of us is you, this prophetic voice of independence that's saying country matters more than party. Community matters more than party. And so, before Kathy pulls my coat, I will say this. Um, we've made some progress over the last 20, 25 years in certain very important areas. We can't backslide. I grew up in the city of the 1970s. I was a teenager. You know that city. We can't go back. It's going to require independent leadership. Thank you for what you do. God bless you.